Hello. So, welcome back, um, or thank you for coming by if you're a first time viewer. My name is Andy. I am Andy the Nitrous on YouTube and Ravelry and Instagram. And this is my little corner where I like to share all of the things I do with yarn and crafts and etc. Today is a very special day. It's my birthday! Um, I, I love my birthday. You know, some people don't uh, like their birthday, but I absolutely love mine. It's like, I don't know, that one day of the year where I just get to feel extra special. Um, so, <sighs> happy birthday to me! I am uh, sipping on some tea that I got in, I ordered some yarn from Trilogy Yarns and she put a couple little packets of tea and this one is from Trader Joe's, it's organic pomegranate white tea. I always love when people put like little things extra in their package, like I don't, I don't expect it every time, like I don't think that it's necessary every time, but it's always just like a fun little surprise when there's an extra something in there she sent this one and then two other stash ones there was one in there that was a uh, red velvet by stash and my daughter snatched that one up right away so i think it's been about three weeks since i filmed last and uh this is episode seven um i have quite a bit that i have finished starting with what I'm wearing. This is my Magpie Tendency sweater that is, the pattern is by Skinanigans. Um, she's on Ravelry and Instagram. I knit this in a DK instead of fingering weight because I wanted it to be extra big and I wanted it to be cotton. So kind of just, it's like a crop sweater and it hangs down a little longer on the sides. And it's like a, a broken garter stitch with eye cord um, cast on and cast offs. And I really just love, I didn't think that as a big girl I could do a cropped sweater. But um, seeing everybody's Instagrams and stuff with their cropped sweaters, I'm like, you know what? I might be able to do that. And I love this. Um, I am going to make another one out of fingering yarn so that it's a little smaller and uh, I really I really do love this so this um, let me show you guys this is magpie tendency um, by skinanigans her name is Melissa and it is a paid for pattern on Ravelry and I really like it I knit mine in uh, the Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend. It's a 50-50 cotton polyester. And my colorway is uh, Spring Meadows. And I still use the needle size and followed. I followed her pattern exactly. I just used bare yarn. Because I knew that would result in a bigger sweater. Now her pattern does go up to like I think 72 inch bust. And it is meant for you know positive ease. I think it said 6 to 10 inches of positive ease. So you know there's still a lot of room to play with. And I went up a size and I actually didn't measure mine but I would say I'm close to like 85 maybe 90 inches around but that's what I was going for so I really really like this um, I also have finished uh, a couple of hats one hat I made for a friend of mine for his birthday and I knit that already and I gave it to him um, if you want to see pictures of that it is on my Instagram um, it is the Field of Wildflowers hat, and I had knit it in the Electric Rainbow colorway by Madeline Tosh. But it basically looks like this, just different colors. So this is Field of Wildflowers, and this yarn is, let me get my paper out. This is Fairy Tale Knits, um, and their Cyclops Specialty, which is their worsted weight. Um, and this colorway is Hello Sweetie, 
which is a, a Doctor Who reference, which I love Doctor Who, so I love this yarn. This this yarn actually was my husband's, and um, so I made this for my friend's mom, who happens to be um, dealing with breast cancer, and um, she's recently had to cut her hair off because it was falling out. And I thought it would be really nice for me to knit her up a super soft hat. And so I asked her what her mom's favorite colors were. She said she liked pinks and purples. Now I know that this kind of looks blue um, in the lighting, but in, in real life it's, there's a lot of purples. I think you might be able to see some of the, the purples there. So I was going through my stash and I found this yarn. And it was my husband's he had purchased for himself to knit with. And I kind of commandeered it okay because I replaced it for him um, so I made this um, those skeins had 280 yards and this took me like just a little less than half a skein so I thought that's pretty neat now this is a targi this is a um, hundred percent targi wool um, I think that it's pretty soft it's it's not as soft as merino but um, it's really soft. I just love this pattern that she's designed. I feel like it makes all the little speckles in the, in the color, I feel like it makes it pop. So I used about a half a skein for that. So I had so much left over, I made a matching one for my friend. So she's an only child and her and her mom have a super great relationship. So I think that's something they would totally do like a matchy matchy thing so I made one for her mom and one for her so I'm going to mail those out soon ish I just realized my kids like ripped a hole in my mannequin's head oh, can't have anything nice so made those and then I had made a third one in the same pattern for my friend's birthday um, and he really liked that and it was like the electric rainbow so it was like bright neon colors with speckles of black in it um hop over on to my instagram uh if you want to check that out i wanted to say uh a big thank you to um chevy rail uh and the blissful stitch they both they both gave me shout outs within the past week and i've gotten a few new subscribers thanks to them so Thank you so much uh, for checking me out and, um, you know, coming back to visit me. Um, I, I really love watching both of their podcasts. And I was just sitting knitting both times, sitting and knitting, watching their podcasts. And then I heard my name and I had like a little fangirl moment and I was squealed. And my kids were like, what's wrong, mom? And I'm just like, oh my gosh. One of my favorite podcasters just said my name. I was freaking out. So, you know, it was it was fun to hear that. But I know I just really love watching all the podcasts. <laughs> that was my fleece that just fell. Um, I love watching all the podcasts and I was super excited and thankful to hear um, my name and get a shout out. And because of that, I've gotten a few new people to come over. So welcome. Uh, thank you for coming over. Um, my fleece just fell out of a bag. I, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let me finish with my finished objects. So the next thing that I finished, I think I showed this last week, um, is my market bag. So I think it was about here maybe, uh, last time. So I finished this market bag. I love this. I keep this one in my purse and it has really helped me to like if I'm running into the store to grab something. Oh no, I don't need a bag. I have one in my purse. So um, I was talking about the handles last week. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I did do the two handle option. I shouldn't have because my idea was, oh, I'll have the two handles and then I can hold the bag open. Yeah, no, it doesn't really work. You, you see the bag kind of just flops down to the side so I still have to actually hold the bag open versus using the handles. I do like that th these two handles it is nice to just throw over my shoulder when I'm carrying something so I mean that's cool but 
I think next time I make one of these bags, I'm going to just follow the entire pattern instructions. But, you know, I like to play around. I mean, aesthetically, it's very, very cute. Like, I had ran out of yarn um, on the handles. Like, because you cast on and then you're knitting and around for the handles and then I ran out. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just use some of the whipped cream colorway that I had left. I also ran out of yarn on this sweater and did the same thing for my bind off. Um, but I like, I like the way that looks because that it matches really well with, with the whole sweater. So, finished that. And... I think that I showed you guys my hand spun that uh, the beaded hand spun that I was working on and I made a little shawl I say a little shawl I mean it is a almost my wingspan yeah just about but it's kind of short so it's not like my size I mean I can wear it like if I were going to wear it like a scarf like a kerchief style like I can wear it like this but Scarlett has laid claim to this shawl and it fits her very nicely so you can see all my random beading work in there there's the the two colorways where I had blended them together before and then I finished the coral color and put it on there I really really like this I this um, I didn't use a pattern for this shawl so what I did was um, now I'm probably gonna butcher this name because I'm not great at pronouncing but I think her name is Frances and she is from Aroha Knits so she did the five shawls five day challenge and she sent you or you signed up and then you got an email every day with a different shawl and you were supposed to knit it for just 30 minutes and then bind off well so that's five different shawl constructions that you get from her so that taught me so much because I I you know don't necessarily know how to make a shawl but I like I know how to make a hat you cast on in a circle and then people's patterns have the different techniques well I didn't know the basics for a shawl and be think because of her I now know the basics of five different shaped shawls, so I'm really thankful for that. It's really awesome. I was trying to tag her in it on my project page, but I, I didn't couldn't find like a pattern to do it, so I don't know. But I used the crescent shawl shape and came up with this, and I just threw some yarn overs in there, you know, knit two together yarn overs in there. Um, whenever I felt like it needed, you know, some... Kind of almost evenly spaced but I really really love this and it's just so nice it's very drapey I think I use 10 size 10 to knit with this um, and it gives it extra like drape and it's just so cute and you can see like I got random beads in there. Scarlet really loves this. I I think that it's it's totally fun and I like experimenting and you know that's the the whole thing about knitting with me is I, I like to, to just do different things like I don't want to do everything the same all the time and I just like to experiment so you know my spinning was an experiment and then knitting this, you know, shawl was an experiment. I didn't know how big it was going to be. I didn't know how much yarn I was going to have. I think that I literally, but when I was done with this, had maybe five inches. Five inches left over and it's it's all woven. So, and it's just, it's, it's really amazing to spin your own yarn and then knit with it, like, I don't think I'll bead again because that was uh, and then you know the beads landed randomly which is cool I like random because I can't I can't do random on my own generally like um, but then all the beads kind of clumped up in like one section on this one so even though I did it random the way the pattern worked out they're all in one spot so 
because I really loved this crescent shawl and I wanted one for myself, I went ahead and cast on and finished. The, the, it goes really quick when you're using the big needles and the yarn. I cast on and I finished one for myself. I ha got this. Um, this is a hairpin that I got from Michaels. No, I'm sorry, Joanne Fabrics. And I just thought it's really cute. It works very well for a shawl pin. So my friend um, Stacy gave me this huge bag of yarn. Um, and most of it was like, um, I think most of it was like loops and thread from Michaels. Um, and there was this very, very pretty sparkly purple that was in there. And I had a shawl cake, cake, shawl and a cake by Lion Brand in this sparkly colorway. And then this purple is what Stacy gave me and they just go so well together so this is my crescent shawl and it is bigger than my wingspan and it is really awesome and it's so drapey and I just absolutely love it this I think is the um, opal colorway I have no idea exactly what this purple is I guessed on my project page because I went all of the yarn in the bag was from Michaels so I went to Michaels and checked out um, yarns that look similar to this and I think that this is like the Vanna White um, sparkle yarn that she does so I put that on my project page I don't know 100% for sure if it is but I'm pretty sure that's what it is by logical deduction so let's see this fits all the way around me. If I could do it right. And it's just a nice light summer shawl. Very pretty colors. I have a purple dress that I wore this with the other day. Because it's here in Oregon it gets chilly. Um, every night uh, the temperature drops and then during the day it rises so in the summer evenings it can be a little chilly you just need something on your shoulders and that fleece is just falling again I got two no three huge bags of fleece so I was in my local yarn shop I'm a new spinner I started in January Okay, so I've never processed a fleece or dealt with it at all, but I've been thinking about it. I was in my local yarn shop one Saturday, and I was supposed to have left already and go home. My husband was texting me. He's like, hey, are you coming home soon? And I was like, yeah, yeah, but I stayed and chit-chatted and, you know, like longer than I had wanted to originally. And I was talking to the ladies there about, uh, you know, if anybody was going to go to the... Oregon Fiber Festival or the Black Sheep Gathering because I want to go and I want to pick out a fleece maybe but I have no idea what I'm looking for you know and so um, this lady walks in um, and her name is Shannon and she was talking to um, the ladies that work there and she said um, I have three alpacas and I want to know if I can donate their fleeces to anybody that wants them and I'm sitting behind like her back is facing me and I my eyes lit up and uh, Ashley the girl she was talking to <laughs> could see that I was really excited but you know Ashley said well you know there's the spinners and weevils weavers guild weevils <laughs> spinners and weavers guild um, in our local area you know they take donations but um, you know, unless somebody around here, ears have perked and maybe, you know, you could talk to them. And so she turned around and I was like, hi, me, please. I would love to, I would love to process, um, you know, an alpaca fleece. That would be awesome. So she said, okay, we exchanged phone numbers. She said, you know, it's about a month before they're being sheared. Um, I'll contact you then. So she had told me, you know, the, the date around when they were going to be sheared. So I was 
in my purse and I found her phone number and I said, oh, I'm just going to send her a text message just to touch base with her in case maybe she lost mine. And we were texting back and forth. And so Sunday she texted me. She said, hey, you want to come pick up those fleeces? And I, um, I said, yeah. So I went out there and it was just like really serendipitous. Like the, the I love when the universe like throws things in your lap like when you need them or you know it, it it was just really awesome and she's such a nice lady and like I really enjoyed talking to her I sat chit chatted her with her for a while about her alpacas alpacas is something that my husband has been after for a while we don't have our our own property but we are you know thinking when we buy our own home that that might be something that that we do down the road so she was giving us all the tips and we got to meet her alpacas, they are uh, Tina, Venus, and Sophie Marie. Sophie Marie. I want to say Sophie Ann, but I think it's Sophie Marie. My husband here, he would tell me because he remembered. They were so cute. They're like big giant puppy dogs. We got to feed them apples. It was really awesome. So... She's like, well, how much of, you know, this fleece do you want? I just have to give, you know, a little bit of fluff to my friend. He's going to make fishing flyers with them. And I said, I will take however much you want to give me. So she gave me all three of them, all three fleeces. So I can't show it to you because they're in big giant bags over there, but they keep rolling off each other. But I can show you some of their fluff. So this is Venus, the black was Venus, the white was Tina, and any of you who have watched Napoleon Dynamite would get that reference, even though she was a llama and this is an alpaca, but it's still funny. And this is Sophie Marie. I am super excited to process this I probably am in over my head if I'm being honest with myself at all but I don't care it'll be an adventure it'll be something to try I have so many ideas I want to make like a rug out of like the stuff that's not spinnable I'd like to make some foot pedal covers like felted foot pedal covers for my spinning wheel I have so many plans and I want to, I want to spin some of this yarn up and I want to spin all the colors solid, just like they are natural, like all white, all brown, all black. And then I want to apply them together and I want to make a shawl for Shannon as a thank you from me. I don't know how long that's going to take me to do, but I'm excited. I am in the process of I'm getting my husband to make me a skirting table so I can kind of figure this out and, and deal with it. Um, I don't really have anything other than two little dog brushes um, to process it with, which I think that's going to take me a really long time if I decide to do it that way. But we'll see. I, I'll get there. So look forward to seeing some of that progress here in the future. Um, that leads me to my next spinning um uh oh finished object i spun up one of those bags of hobbledy hoy here let me this is my uh homemade nitty naughty that my husband made me i had him make me one that was two yards so that i wouldn't have to do so much math when i was winding was the one that i have is a yard and a half and every time i'd have to I mean, I'm still multiplying because this is two yards, but it was a yard and a half times, it was 56 inches times blah, 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 divided by 36 so I could figure out how many yards. It was, it was more math than I wanted to do. This, I don't have to pull out my calculator. I know that this is 136 yards because it went around half of that many times. So I, let's see, it's still a little over twisted. Um, I haven't soaked it or anything yet, but I spun up all three of those little bats. I think I showed you last week. I spun them up 
the the one rainbowy colorway and there was like some browns and stuff in the in the in the bats like in there there was browns and tans and olives it wasn't all just rainbow it was really awesome so i spun all three of those up separately and then plied them together and i got this beautiful three ply yarn and it's so awesome i just really really like it like I like what they're like where it plied up there's some tans and browns next to some light blues like there's purples and greens that ended up together I just am really really happy with how this turned out um, I, I'm I'm an experimenter I I could read all the things about spinning and have all the knowledge and do all the things properly but then I don't think I would come up with artistic things because the more you read and the more you know then then you're like oh well there's a right way and a wrong way to do things and you know maybe I wouldn't blend certain colors together because visually they might turn into mud and I took that risk you know this could have I mean it's a little muddy in places this could have turned into something horribly scary but I am really happy with how it turned out so that's that's the, the joy of being a new spinner is you get to take all those risks and see if they they pay off like I just I'm so happy with this like I don't think an experienced spinner maybe wouldn't just like oh I'm gonna just take this rainbow bat and I'm just gonna you know the, some people are more logical in in the way they go about their spinning I don't know what I'm trying to say I, anyway I'm just excited that I get to just experiment with everything and I have fun with it and regardless of what the outcome is I tend to like it anyway like there's not been something that I've made that I didn't really like See, here's a spot I was talking about where the blues and the browns came together I just really like that that makes me want to get some light blue and some brown and spin them together I just I really I don't generally gravitate towards colors like this I'm usually a bright person but I feel like that would make a a very pretty something don't know what this is gonna be it's only a like 136 maybe it was 138 138 because I think it went around 64 times and that is two two yards so yeah um, I don't know what I'm gonna make because this was four ounces and it was 138 yards I think that puts this at about a worsted weight some spots look thinner than that to me um, and I have to soak it and then um, I wanna I think I'm gonna weight it because there's still a lot of twist in it we'll see after I, I soak it um, and then I'll recheck the yardage I don't know what I'm gonna make um, this is Polworth, um, if I didn't say that, by Hobbledy Hoy. It was her, her bats that I got from my friend Vanessa. And I just, I really, 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 really love the way that turned out. That's so appealing to me. So I finished that. And that's all the things I finished. Um, it's quite a bit for three weeks. Now, mind you, those hats are quick, and this sweater... And those shawls because they're knit on like higher size needles with smaller yarn it just they just fly right off the needles um, I haven't really touched my sweaters that I was working on this sweater though when I was the construction of the sweater I don't want to give too much away but with the construction of the sweater um, I had a point where it landed on my needles and I had it on my lap and it fell in a manner that looked like this and that gave me inspiration so I am going to take her pattern and start it out just the same until I got get to a point where I could stop and I'm going to make it's almost like a poncho but then I'm going to gather it in at the waist and do like a ribbed waistband uh, longer waistband 
So I'm gonna take her same construction for this. I'm, I'm gonna send her a, a message and let her know that I was completely inspired by her pattern. One, I love the sweater. Two, it's inspired me to make something else. I won't write a pattern. I'm not good at writing patterns. I have a few patterns on Instagram. I'm not, I thought that they were, they were clearly explained, not on Instagram, on Ravelry. I thought they were clearly explained, but you know, I, it was when I was a new knitter and I didn't do my gauge and I couldn't tell you what it is because I don't still have those things. And it's just the way that I knit and I just wrote the pattern. So they're not great patterns. They weren't tech edited. They weren't test knit. So, you know, there are some issues with them. I don't want to be a designer. I don't want to write a pattern, but I will make my own things like up. Um, I will, in the project notes, when I put it online, I will, um, reference this sweater. So if somebody, you know, has this pattern, they can figure out kind of what I did. Um, and I don't know, but I like when I get an inspiration idea. So that's what I've been working on is in this mochaccino colorway of the, the comfy cotton because I bought all this cotton because I just like the way it feels. So this would be the sleeve, right? I'm going to turn this into the front panel, knit out the side, knit out the other side, and then gather it at the waist and it'll kind of just fall like, uh, almost looks like a poncho, but I, I, I don't know what it'll turn out, like how it'll turn out if I'll love it, but I was just struck with inspiration when this fell on my lap the way it did, and I was like, ooh, that could be something else. So I sped through knitting this and uh, cast this on right away. So I've got both of the sides done, and I'm, well, I guess it'd be the front panel and back panel now, and I'm doing one side, and then I'll do the other side, and then I'll make a waist. So... That's what I've been working on. And I did cast on um, from the Francis, the, the five shawls in five days, one of the patterns that she gave you was a, I think it's called a three quarter shawl. So that's what I am working on because I really like the summer shawls. I, they knit up very quickly uh, and they're lightweight and it's really good to have something here when, on the chilly night. So this will be a three-quarter shawl. Um, this yarn is Knit Picks. I've had this forever. I got it for my birthday years and years ago, I think from my friend Randy. And this is alpaca and silk. Oh, I thought it was wool and silk. It's alpaca and silk. It's, it's Knit Picks Shimmer. Uh, and it is alpaca and silk. And funny story about this yarn. It's so soft and so slippy. When I was caking this up, I guess, so my ball winder is on my kitchen counter. Because my house is small, that's where it fits. Whatever. So it's on my kitchen counter. And I was caking this up and I was, it was just going real smooth. I was going real fast and this flew off halfway through. It flew off my ball winder and landed in my kitchen sink, which was full of dishwater. And I was only halfway through spinning it. So the other half was still on the skein winder and this was now a wet mess. And it's wet, so I can't very well try to untangle it or it's going to felt upon itself because it's wet and it's alpaca. And so I to let it sit in time out and dry so that I could untangle it and then rewind it. And the second time around, I wound it really slow and I also made sure that my kitchen sink was empty. So that's a fun little ball of yarn mess. So I have this. It's been in my stash forever. Um, I think it's a 50 grams. So it's like 400 and some odd yards. And I have two um, mohairs that are sitting in my stash. I use these for 
Scarlet's little unicorn back there. So I'm going to throw these guys in there, like a couple of panels, you know, like in there somewhere to give it a little more size. I think that'll be, I think that'll be cute. I don't know. We'll see what it turns into. No pattern per se for this, just regular basic construction. I don't think that of a three quarter shawl, I don't think that I'm going to throw any extra lace in there because this is already just so, so lacy. I'm knitting these on size 10. Um, yeah, so I've been working on that too. And I, I mean, I have other projects on the needles. I haven't really touched them. I've got two pairs of socks that I've, I've shown you guys and, and a couple of sweaters and other stuff, but I haven't really touched them. So there's no point in showing you. So I was talking about my tea that I got from Trilogy Yarns. So I might as well show you the yarn that I got for my birthday for myself. It is Trilogy Yarns, and it is a BFL sock, and this is called Badger Mountain, and I really like these colors, purples and teals and some darker grays. I've not knit with uh, BFL before, so I was, she was having a sale, and I was like, happy birthday to me. And I'm really excited to knit this up. I am tr trying to make myself stop casting things on because I knit a whole sweater before I finished my pair of socks. And I knit like three hats and two shawls and I haven't touched my owl sweater or my Hogwarts sweater. They're just sitting there. And I need to because both of those sweaters are for knit alongs uh the owl sweater i'm doing for the chevy rail um book make along because that is in my knitting wizardly book and the hogwarts sweater i am doing for meg of bad wolf girl sits and knits is knit along for her hogwarts a history sweaters so i need to get on both of them because both of those end at the end of the summer i think so i need to pick them up and knit them but this will have to wait for a little while, but in the meantime, it'll sit and inspire me for what it wants to be. I still want to make some Hermione's Everyday Socks, but I think that I want to find a good color that's going to make that pattern pop. So I'm going to have to do a little more searching around. Oh, I'm supposed to show this bag. That this is living in it actually needs to go in another bag it's falling out my mama got me this bag um, we were at our um, what is it called farmers market um, one Saturday when she was here and um, there were some quilting ladies they had like little quilted pot holders and they had these little bowl thing like you put a hot bowl in it so you don't burn your hands like with it was neat and they had this bag sitting there well now me and my mom were walking separately like not together up the the farmers market i had my daughter she was walking with my dad and we were looking at different things i walked over and i saw this bag and i i picked it up and i looked at it and it's got these little fairies and there's like toadstools on the trees and there's a little deer and it's not it's a nice square construction and it's you know it's a quilted bag with the seam on the inside and um, I picked it up and I'm like oh that's cute but I had just bought a bag from uh, Twin Oaks that I showed last time and I bought this key fob from her too because she had a deal and it was like three for five dollars or something and this has it's, got, it's pink and it's got a little toadstool on it I had bought that already and the bag that I had shown and so I put it down and I walked away and um, you know, finished doing the farmer's market thing and I'm like, okay, we're ready to go. And my mom, um, walked over and we met at the car and my mom had this bag. She, she picked it up and she's like, here, I bought this for you. And I was like, oh my God, I really like that bag. I was just looking at it like 
And it, it just, it was weird that my mom's like, yeah, I kind of, I kind of knew like you wanted it. And I'm like, we weren't even like together. It's not like she saw me looking at it and then she bought it, you know, when I walked away. We were at that booth at two different times and it's, it's just so neat. My mom has, you know, she knows her daughter so well. It's really, really cute, and I like it. And she asked me to show it. So the other, the last thing that I have been working on is a new project to me. And I was at Walmart, and I saw they had this little woven basket. And it was made out of, it was like rope, but, you know, it was really soft. So it was almost like a really... Mm, thick, thick, thick yarn, but it wasn't yarn. It was rope. Um, and it's very, very soft and movable. And I was like, that is such a cute basket. My husband's like, you could make that. And so I'm looking at it and the bottom was flat woven. And then they went up the sides, uh, with some more rope and then back down. And then they wove in between that. And so I'm Googling and I am trying to find a video or instructions or something on how to do that but I don't know exactly what to type in you know I'm just like yarn basket woven basket everything's showing me with grass so I, I couldn't figure it out well I had typed in yarn woven basket and it came up with this uh, Indian baskets um, and I found a video and the lady's name is I think it's Katriana or it's I think it's it's C-A-T-R-I-O-N-A Katriana it said Catriana, a.k.a. Cat, was her, her YouTube name. So I'm watching her video, and she took rope, and she's just wrapping yarn around it. And I'm like, oh, I have in my craft closet. Years ago, I made a mirror, and I, you know, was doing, like, a nautical thing. So I took rope, and I glued it, hot glued it, around my mirror and put some seashells on it. And I had bought this whole thing of rope like four, five, six years ago. And it's been sitting with all my stuff. And it wasn't a nice little wound ball, but I've been using it. So it's not anymore. And it's been sitting there not getting used. And I'm like, oh, I have rope. Oh, I have all that yarn that I just got from Stacy. So I'm making a basket. And I like it. Like a ton. It's super easy to do. Um, so, you know, you start down here at the bottom and then you wrap your yarn around the thing until you can curl it. And then you double wrap, you know, you wrap around, wrap around. So by the time you get where you're doubling it, so you've already wrapped around here and then you're coming around to here and then you wrap, single wrap this rope and then you double wrap the one you did and the one you're working on. And then you single wrap and then you double wrap and then you single wrap and then you double wrap and it's really easy so she had two videos um the first video she didn't really speak i think it was silent and then the second video she's telling you how to how to turn how to turn the basket um so um when you turn the basket she was doing you use your needle and your thread and then you go in one up behind and then back you're basically doing a figure eight over the two over the two and I'm like oh well I like the way that looks better than this so I just started doing the figure eights around all of the the whole side versus the the double wrap you're still going around two but you're doing a figure eight around it instead of just a loop so I really like that um, I have started a handle I just did that part last night so I'm going to go all the way around, make another handle here, and then I'll go back up and I'll make it a double rope handle and then it'll be done. I don't know exactly how to finish it off or where I'll stop. Maybe I'll do the, the double handle, the double handle, and then stop it right before that handle and then just go around. I didn't watch all the way to the end of the video. I just got the information that I needed to get started. So we'll see what that turns into. And I'll, I'll link her video down below, um, the video I used. So 
I'm really happy. Like, I'm making my own basket. And, you know, it's it's a bendy movie basket, which is cool. What I really like about this basket is I can put fiber in here and it's not going to snag on the ra raffita, raffia, what, whatever baskets are made of. Grass. Grass. It's not going to snag on the grass or the rope because it's, it's smooth. It's yarn. I, I'm in love with it. I, I really, I'm in love with everything and I absolutely love everything that I do. I say that all the time. But yeah, so... How fun is that? And this is just a really neat thing. You know, you have your yarn attached and and you're working with, you know, sections of yarn at a time. So it's not attached to your ball because you have to thread your needle and like, so you go over and then under and then back through the bottom one. And it's just, it's a, something that I sit and I do and I'm watching TV and I don't feel like knitting, which isn't very often, but this, this inspired me a lot. So, um, well, while, I, you know, my husband's like, you can make that. And I'm like, you just gave me permission to start a new hobby. Did you know you did that? Because that's what you did. So it's his fault. It's not my fault. It's his fault. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. It's like a lot. I feel like it's so much for three weeks, but I mean, I've been working on a lot of small projects and those shawls, those lace weight shawls, you know, with fingering weight yarn and size 10 needles, they knit up like super quick. I, I was, this sweater, I did this sweater in, now mind you, it's a crop sweater, but it's still, it's a big piece of fabric. I did this in three or four days, I think. Like, it's so fast. It's so fast. So, um, kids are getting ready to be out of school. I think their last day is Thursday. Um, I'm getting ready to go get my free drink for my birthday from Dutch Brothers and I think I got a free slice of pie with my name on it at Sherry's and um, oh I'm gardening I used to not be able to keep things alive um, I say that but the fact of the matter is is I would just forget about them and be lazy and I wouldn't focus on them so you know, the joke in my family was that I have a black thumb uh, versus a green thumb, you know, because I can't, I can't grow anything. So, uh, the thumb of death. Uh, <laughs> but I, so I got a tomato plant. And we can't plant a garden garden here because we don't have a, a very big yard. And it's not nice and it's really just all gravelly because um, of where we live. Um, and it's rented, so I didn't want to put too much. So I got a pot. And I put, um, I'm just working on this basket while I'm talking to you guys. Um, and I put a tomato plant in it and it started to grow. Well, you know, it was already a tomato plant, like a flowering tomato plant, but like the tomatoes started to grow. Like it actually was forming a tomato. And so I was like, oh, yay. And then I noticed that. The leaves were starting to look really sad and it was like droopy and so I went online and I did some research. The pot I had it in was too small so I put it in a bigger pot and now it's just like it's like so big and there's like probably 25 and I'm not exaggerating there's probably 25 little tiny tomatoes on there. I got one that's it's about that big and he's just started to turn yellow I noticed yesterday so it'll be it'll be soon and then it'll turn red and so I'm like, I could do this. I got this. So I went and got some strawberry plants. And I planted um, some strawberry plants in pots. Um, and I got a couple of kitchen herbs. And mind you, these are all already established plants. And I just have to keep them alive. It's not like I grew them from seeds. I'm not I'm not there yet. I'm not my sister-in-law. She's got her greenhouse and growing everything. And anyway, um, so I'm super excited. And I live in a very uh, urban part of 
town, I guess, ish, as urban as Roseburg, Oregon can be. Um, and so I didn't think anything of it. And all my pots are just sitting in my yard and they're growing. And I've been sitting on my porch and knitting on my porch and spinning on my porch and looking at my garden, watering my garden every day. It's making me happy. I had some little strawberries popping up. And I get up one day to go water my plants. All of my strawberry plants are gone. Like, down to the stalk. Chewed up, eaten, gone. I wanted to cry. I was so sad. Like, my tomato plant's still fine and okay, and nothing touched the herbs, and there's, like, deer prints in the mulch. A deer came in my urban area, in my yard, and ate both my strawberry plants down to the dirt. I was devastated. It was, I was so sad. I've been like so proud of my little garden. So I went and I got some stakes and I got some fencing and put a little tiny fence around my like seven foot by seven foot square. And the strawberries are starting to grow leaves again. So I don't know. I probably won't get any strawberries from them this year. <sighs> but you never know. So sad. That one strawberry plant was so big, it had big, huge green leaves and tons of strawberry flowers. And the other one had like little tiny white strawberries on there. And I guess that deer's thankful in my urban area that I gave him a snack. But I was, I was upset. I was cursing and I was, I was mad at nature that day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no everything's it, it's fun though it's it's nice to i i have always wanted to be somebody who could grow their own food like i feel like that is a life skill that should be taught in to to you in school like there are tons of things that when you're you become an adult that you don't you don't know that should have been taught to you like I will not go down, I will not go down that road. You know, I miss that uh, home ec was my favorite class. Like, had they taught me how to grow a garden in home ec, that'd have been awesome. I know I could have took in horticulture, but like, it should be like a thing. Like, you have to take, this is a life skill that you need to know. You need to know how to use the washing machine. You need, I mean, your parents could teach you that too, but like, I digress. Anyway, thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me um and uh happy knitting oh that's somebody else's words have a good time knitting thanks for stopping by <laughs>